You are listening to The Centropic Oracle, an audiobook podcast of science fiction and fantasy short stories that make you think and feel. Full Ride by Julie Frost Funny how no one ever believes me, my college roommate said. At first, anyway. Well, no, for Christ's sake, Lucas, I'm drunk, but I'm not that drunk. Don't bring him into this, Lucas said. His voice was mild, but a deep anger burned in his eyes that I caught, even in my inebriated state. I could hear the capital H, and it made me blink. I held up a placating hand. All right, all right. All I'm saying is, he said, handing me another beer and clinking his bottle against mine, that I can give you your life's dreams. The great career, the loving wife, the house on the hill and all it costs is one little soul that's not even yours. I was a drifting sea student with only a vague clue what I really wanted in the future, and we were both crocked. I fiddled with my beloved Nikon and decided to humor him. So, how does it work? I sign something in blood giving you the soul of my firstborn child, and you wave your hand and poof, I'm successful? Not quite. These things take time. I can't do it too quickly or people will get suspicious. And you have to at least give the appearance of making an effort, Jim. What did I have to lose, really? It's not like I thought he was serious. I guess I should, you know, pick a major or something. I have my standard contract right here. He pulled a drawer open and grabbed a thick sheaf of paper. I blinked owlishly, and some modicum of common sense reared its head, making me hesitate. If this was a joke, it was an elaborate one. Can I think about it? He gave me an easy grin and took another swig of his beer. I can leave the offer open for a while. I slammed the door to the apartment open and kicked it viciously shut, which hurt my sandaled foot and made me even madder. Yet another failed biology exam. Which was my own fault, really. I should study more and party less. I snagged a beer out of the fridge and collapsed onto our sagging sofa, contemplating my crappy part-time job at the office supply store and wondering if I was ever going to do anything better. Not only that, but Hope, the girl I liked in that class, had aced the test, and she looked at me pityingly when I banged my head on my desk after it was over. I didn't want her to pity me, I wanted her to think I was awesome. Well, dumbass, I snarled at myself. Maybe if you cracked a book every once in a while, you'd be awesome instead of pathetic. Flunk another one? Lucas asked, coming out of his room and scrubbing a hand through his unruly mop of black hair. He breezed through his classes with barely any effort I could see. Right now, I hated him for that. I glared at him. Maybe? I can make this easier on you. I lifted a sarcastic eyebrow. If you're the Prince of Darkness, how come you're still in college? Easy pickings. He smiled, and I couldn't decide if he was joking or not. Besides, you can't beat the girls. Young, nubile, away from home for the first time. He never lacked for female company, that was for sure, although they never spent the night. I wasn't sure I envied him that. I only wanted the one girl. But she was as far out of reach as the moon. Bleh, I said. Someone needs to kick my ass. I suck. You don't suck. You're just unmotivated. If getting the girl and the grades won't motivate me, then what will? Unmotivated and undirected. Get a direction and that'll give you the motivation. Easy for you to say. You don't have to work hard for anything. Oh, what I do is quite hard, on occasion. He gave me an indecipherable look. So, what do you want, Jim? If you could have your ultimate dream job, what would that be? I turned my camera over and over in my hands. I'd been thinking about that a lot over the last couple of days. I still wasn't positive, but something was solidifying. Photojournalist? I think. Travel the world, see interesting things, tell people about them? He nodded. That's doable, and you don't need good grades in biology for it. No, but I still have to pass. So much hate for that class. There was a reason I'd waited until my junior year to take freshman bio. Hate, hate, hate. And now it was crunch time, and I would only get a passing grade via divine intervention. 
or the other kind. One side of his mouth turned up. Okay, I'll give you a freebie because I like you. No strings. You'll get an A on your next bio test, I guarantee it. At this point, I'd take any edge I could get, and if he could really do what he said he could do, I'd already thought of a way to cheat, because far be it for me to actually sell an innocent soul to the devil. Thanks, Lucas. He steepled his fingers. The gesture made him look a lot older. No problem. I aced the next test. Hope smiled at me. Over a celebratory rum and coke, I said, Okay, Lucas, where do I sign? You may want to read it first. The rules say I have to tell you that. There are rules? If there were rules, then maybe I could weasel out later. After all, I'd figured out how to drop a class after finals last year. I didn't want to do that again because someone might notice this time, but I was no stranger to rule-breaking. Or rule-circumventing. A couple. The thick sheaf of paper came out again, and he peeled three pages off of it and handed it to me. This is it? Brevity is the soul of wit. I ran my finger down the page. I, the undersigned, boilerplate, firstborn, blah blah blah. Nice touch on the archaic spelling, dude. I hadn't read the end-user license agreement for my word processor either, and it wasn't like I really believed all this bullshit anyway, when all was said and done. He tossed a pen into my lap. I thought I had to sign it in blood. I just need your thumbprint in blood, not the signature. Blood makes horrible ink, just so you know. Clots. Huh. Whatever, I wasn't going to argue. He pricked me with a pushpin, and my thumbprint went next to my scrawled signature. An unpleasant tingle shot up my arm as I pressed my thumb to the paper, and I eyed Lucas. He looked back with that half-smile playing around his lips. I shuddered. The rest of the term went by in a blur. I spent less time in the bar and more time in the library. Lucas stocked less beer in the fridge, and we ate more fish. Brain food, he said when I protested. We saved the heavy partying for weekends. Even that gradually tapered off as finals approached. And I got up the guts to ask Hope out. I thought I'd fall through the floor when she dimpled and said yes. We had a great time, which nearly made me fall through the floor again. Before I knew it, we were spending every Friday evening together. She'd hunt me down in my corner of the library and help me study during the week. And I never tried to get in her pants. The motive, of course, being that I didn't want to take even a remote chance of conceiving any kids, but she didn't know that. She said it was refreshing to date a gentleman who cared about her as a person instead of a sex toy. I had the grace to be faintly ashamed of myself for my ulterior motives, but not enough to disabuse her of the notion. Even with the aced bio exam, however, I was still going to have trouble passing the class. I made an appointment with the prof to see if I had a shot at something for extra credit. I've noticed that you've actually started applying yourself in my class, Jim, but I'm afraid... He stopped and tilted his head. There is one thing. I'll do anything. Maybe you should let me tell you what it is first. I grinned sheepishly and he continued. I have a colleague in the School of Medicine. They're testing a polymer sphere compound that they inject into the Vaz Devrins. The what? He gave me a barely lifted eyebrow. The little tube thingy that carries your semen? I gulped and crossed my legs, feeling about three inches tall. No wonder I was failing biology. It kills the sperm and makes you sterile. But it's completely reversible, he hastened to add. They're just having trouble finding volunteer subjects for human trials. This was suddenly interesting. While I still wasn't sure I believed Lucas, I wasn't above superstition. After all, I didn't really believe that having my forefinger across the lens for my first picture on a photo shoot actually helped me take better pictures, but I did it anyway. I had no intention of actually having a child, but I didn't want my sex life to suffer. The problem was that all methods of birth control had a failure rate, and I wasn't comfortable with that. A vasectomy was an option, even at my young age, but the idea of anyone guttling around down there with a scalpel gave me the cold shudders. A needle would be... marginally... better? And this was reversible, so bonus. Kills it dead, 100% of the time. In animal trials, yes, it's been 100% effective. It could be a real breakthrough if they could get the human trials off the ground. They only need a few more volunteers. 
He leaned forward. What do you say? Where do I sign? I'd been saying that a lot lately. I managed to end the term with a B average, a declared major, and a girlfriend, and Lucas watched the whole thing with an inscrutable smile on his face. I had an inscrutable smile of my own. Lab tests on my semen over the last few weeks had shown that the compound had, indeed, been effective. I was shooting blanks. By the time I graduated, I'd pulled my average up from a C to a B. I placed several photos and articles with more than one local paper. A couple of them went national. And hope stayed by my side every inch of the way. We got married right after graduation. Lucas was my best man. He still wore that smile. I didn't care. I was deliriously happy. Hope and I honeymooned in Costa Rica, and I sold a piece about toucan breeders while we were there to a major publication. When we got back, I had a job waiting for me. Entry level, but it was a foot in the door that gave me the opportunity to work my way up. I kept up with the research study, carefully making sure I was still sterile. So far, so good. I'd spun a story for Hope about how I couldn't have kids, which wasn't entirely a lie, I rationalized to myself, but she was career-oriented and not too worried about it. We can always adopt, she said, and that was that. Her job as a cutting-edge computer programmer kept her far too busy to even think about children, and she was on her way up as well. A few months after the wedding, my editor called me into a meeting. I took Hope out to dinner that night. I've got some... interesting news, I said over salad. Her expression turned wary. Good interesting or interesting in the Chinese curse sense? Depends on how you take it, I guess, I inhaled. The boss wants me to go to Oshkosh for a week and cover the big air show, and if that assignment works out, then he'll send me other places. I relaxed as her face lit up. Oh, honey, that's great! That's what you always wanted to do, travel around and take pictures and write! Well, yeah, but there's the whole being away from you thing. I mean, we haven't been married that long. I can deal with it if you can. I've got a nasty deadline coming up, so it's not like I wouldn't be burning the midnight oil anyway. She took my hand. This is a huge opportunity for you. Gorgeous, brilliant, and supportive. Who could ask for anything more? Two years passed. Hope moved up in her company and became a senior programmer with her own team. I got sent out on assignment more and more often, sometimes spending as much as two weeks at a time globetrotting. We bought that house on the hill with a backyard pool. Even as busy as we were, we made it a point to have at least one date night per week. Sometimes Lucas would join us, always with a different woman on his arm. I'd twit him about that, ask him when he was going to settle down, and he'd just give me that same smile which was starting to creep me out, honestly. I still wasn't sure I believed him, but I did have the great job, the great wife, and the great house. Of course, whether Lucas had delivered all that by pulling strings in the background, or I'd done it all myself after getting a kick in the pants was up for grabs. I had to admit that cleaning up my act and finding some ambition had clearly paid off. I wasn't taking chances, though, and followed up with the science people on the polymers religiously. And I even went to church once in a while because I figured that having a friend in a high place couldn't hurt either. When Lucas found out, he scoffed but didn't say anything, and we left it at that. Life was trucking along quite nicely. Naturally, that meant it couldn't last. I came home from a trip to London to find Hope in a state of mingled shock and excitement. She refused to say why, though. I'll tell you at dinner candlelight and atmosphere, and she'd done her hair and her makeup just so, and made us dress for it. Mystified, I ordered the wine and an appetizer, and after the waiter left, I said, okay, spill, what is it? I choked on my water when she said, I'm pregnant. What? How? I, I can't, I'm, I'm not. She smiled softly. Apparently you are, and you can. A line of worry appeared between her eyes. Is it so awful? We can adjust, right? We talked about adopting somewhere down the road. Down the road, though, the timing on this could be better. The waiter brought the wine, and I absently sniffed the cork and then gulped with unseemly haste the glass folk he poured for me. 
Hope declined, sticking with water, and I knew by that that she wasn't playing an elaborate practical joke on me. It wasn't just the timing. My firstborn child? I felt dizzy. This wasn't supposed to happen. Hope's voice came from far away. Jim? What is it? What's wrong? Deep breaths. I could do this. I poured another glass with a shaking hand and swallowed it down, thinking fast. The contract stipulated that Lucas didn't get the soul until the 18th birthday. I had time to figure out a loophole to try and make another deal to... Jim? I snapped back to the present. It's fine. Honey, it's fine. We'll be fine. I don't know how my smile looked, but it felt stapled to my face. I'm happy if you are. What do you mean it stopped working? It was working just fine a few days before I left for London, and it's been working for four years. What happened? I'll have to do some more tests, Dr. Kozak said. But from the looks of it, you had an allergic reaction to the polymer and sloughed it off. Did you feel strange in the last couple of weeks? Fever? Itching? I felt a little run down in London, but I figured it was jet lag. I eyed my crotch. Nothing weird looking came out when I peed. It didn't hurt. Hmm. Let me take some blood, see if I can figure out for sure what happened. I don't want to re-inject the polymers until we know what went wrong. He tapped his pen on the computer screen. You might want to start using another method of birth control. Too late, I muttered. For all that the pregnancy had thrown a monkey wrench into our plans, it looked good on Hope. I'd always thought it was a myth that pregnant women glowed, until she did. She got lucky with the morning sickness, too. She only had mild nausea that disappeared after a couple of months. I would have been happy about it if it weren't for the anvil of worry hanging over my head. Lucas didn't help. He looked inordinately pleased at the news and gave me that smile of his over Hope's shoulder when he hugged his congratulations. I wanted to kill him, and wondered for a brief, insane moment if it was even possible. His smile got even wider, like he knew what I was thinking. I schooled my expression into something hopefully non-homicidal and pulled him aside later. Come on, man, you weren't really serious about all that stuff in college, were you? You signed a contract, Jimmy boy. Time to pay up. He lifted an eyebrow. Or it will be when the kid turns 18, anyway. Don't try and cheat the devil. It never turns out well. I felt the blood drain from my face. How did you know? I have my ways. And why do you think it failed so spectacularly? I got tired of waiting. Any doubts I'd entertained about him not being who he said he was fled like cockroaches from a kitchen light. Oh, God. You don't get to invoke him at this stage of the game. Sorry. You're not sorry. And it's not a game. I rubbed the spot between my eyes. This is an innocent child's soul we're talking about here. You weren't too concerned about that when you signed the contract, and you haven't been shy about grabbing onto the dream job, the dream wife, or the dream house with both hands when they were offered. They weren't offered. I worked my ass off to get where I'm at. And do you honestly think you'd be where you are this soon if I hadn't given a nudge here and a push there? He crossed his arms. Jobs like what you have don't just fall into people's laps, and neither do women like Hope. I stared. You didn't. If she wasn't with me of her own free will, I was going to punch him right in the face, Satan or not. I didn't make her do anything, just an apropos word in her ear at the apropos moment. Your wit and charm did the rest, along with your common interests and rising grades. He shrugged. Brains are sexy, ask any woman out there. Once you started actually using yours, you became attractive to her. My jaw clenched. You know what? Get out. This is supposed to be a happy time for Hope and me, and I'm not going to let you ruin it. His lips twisted into a parody of a grin. All right. But I'll be around. I'm sure you will, but not for the rest of today. I caught Hope cleaning the pool when she was four and a half months along. We'd felt the baby kick, together, just the previous day. If I hadn't been scared as hell, the pregnancy would have been an amazing experience. I grabbed the leaf net out of her hands. Honey, what are you doing? Don't we have someone for this? I fired him. I didn't like the way he was doing his job. 
She stood up straighter and rubbed the small of her back. I haven't had time to get a new guy yet. I wrapped an arm around her. How about you let me worry about that, hmm? It was the least I could do. Okay. She rested her head on my shoulder and let out a shaky sigh. I love you. I love you too. I wondered if she'd still love me when she found out what I'd done. Before I knew it, I was holding my squalling son in my hands. So much promise in such a tiny bundle. Now that he was actually here, and not a large but abstract figment residing within my wife, I was terrified. She held her arms out, and I passed him to her, reluctantly. He's got the requisite number of limbs, I said, covering my fear, and he looks like my Uncle Phil, fat, bald, and noisy. Hope's face was lined with exhaustion, but she smiled. As long as he doesn't get lecherous when he's had a few drinks, he'll be fine. Let's hope we don't find that out for at least a couple years yet. I spent more time at home now that we had a baby. Jacob was a collection of wonder who made me look at the world in a whole new way. He was astonished by everything, the lack of eyebrows making his wide blue eyes seem even more so. Hope. After the first few days, I wasn't sure what to make of her. She obviously loved Jacob to pieces, and nothing about her had really changed that I could put a finger on, but she seemed preoccupied. I finally asked her about it, and she broke down and cried. Oh, honey, no. What? D don't cry. You're going to leave me, and I deserve it. I stared, open-mouthed. Why in the world would I do an utterly stupid thing like that? What have you done that would ever make me want to leave you? Her voice was muffled by her hands. Jacob isn't yours. That felt like a brick to the face. I took several seconds to recover. What? I am so, so sorry. Sobs racked her body. Horror mixed with elation. She'd cheated on me. But that meant that Jacob wasn't my firstborn child and his soul wasn't in any danger. But she'd cheated on me. But I still loved her. And now she wouldn't ever have to find out what I'd done in the name of success. All those things raced through my mind. I decided to ask the questions that mattered most. Is the relationship still ongoing? I swallowed. Does he know? No and no. You were gone so much, and I was lonely, and then when I got pregnant I realized how stupid I was being and fired him because I still loved you and didn't want to lose you. It all came together then, the pool guy. It would have been funny under other circumstances. But who was I to judge? I'd done an awful thing myself and lied about it for four years, and would continue lying about it. Just because it hadn't reared up and bitten me on the ass yet, now that Jacob wasn't mine, didn't mean that I wasn't a bad person in my own right. Then, it's okay. I forgive you. You... what? She looked up at me then, eyes red, face tear-streaked. It was months ago, and you're clearly sorry and wish you hadn't done it. I hugged her and kissed her hair, and she buried her face in my shoulder while I continued. I love you. I'll try to be home more. I glanced at the bassinet, where Jacob slept with his thumb in his mouth. And look what we got out of it. Jacob, who could keep his soul. I'd never been so relieved to have been cheated on in my life. Before I knew it, Jacob was walking, talking, riding a bike, dating, driving. I'd blink and he'd hit another milestone. All the while, Lucas hung around with that not-quite-predatory smile. I had one of my own because he didn't know what I knew. My relationship with Hope blossomed. Her confessions served to pull us together rather than yank us apart, and I was determined to spend more time with her. I still had to go out of the country for my job sometimes, but every once in a while she and Jacob would come along, when schedules allowed. He was a great kid. I loved him like my own, and we never, ever let on that he wasn't biologically mine. And I got a quick vasectomy right after Hope's revelation, because I didn't need a scare like this again. The morning of Jacob's 18th birthday dawned bright and sunny, a beautiful late spring day with high fluffy clouds and an amazing blue sky. 
I whistled while showering because this was the day I got the monkey off my back for good. Jacob had graduated with honors just two weeks before and had been accepted into his first choice of college, a modest private university in-state, but about a hundred miles away. Close, but not too close. I'd parked his present in the garage the previous night, having stored it at Lucas's place for five days beforehand. Lucas had said, You know he's not going to need that, right? We'll see, was all I answered. He'd narrowed his eyes at me, but hadn't made any more cracks. The first party had been planned for noon, with adult relatives and friends. Jacob would have another one later, at a pizza joint with friends his own age. We had a fancy lunch catered, and when we showed him the brand new Mustang in the garage, I thought his eyes would fall out of his head. The spontaneous bear hug he gave me was worth every bit of worry I'd endured for the last eighteen years. "'Can I take it out?' he asked, eyes shining. "'Sure,' I said casually, tossing him the keys. "'Be careful!' Hope admonished. Won't get a scratch on it. He grinned and jumped behind the wheel, but at least kept it at the residential speed limit until he was out of sight. That's an awful lot of car for him, Jim, Hope said. I hope he doesn't wrap it around a tree. Lucas tapped his chin, and I'd had enough. Lucas, can I have a private word with you in my den? Hope caught the edge in my voice and lifted her eyebrow, and I shrugged one shoulder and gave her what I hoped was a reassuring smile. Sure, Jimmy boy. Lucas's smile resembled a shark's. A few moments later, we were ensconced in my office with the door shut. He sat in the chair in front of my desk and put his feet up on the corner. So, eighteen. You've had a good run. Ready to pay up? I pushed his feet off and perched a hip where they'd been. I don't think so. In fact, I don't think you have a deal at all. You signed a contract, Jim, with your own blood as a seal. I like you and all, but business is business. And the contract was for the soul of my firstborn child, deliverable on his 18th birthday. I waited a beat. Jacob isn't my child. For the first time ever, I saw a hint of unease cross Lucas's face. What? Not my biological kid. Hope had an affair while I was off globetrotting early on. Nobody knows but me and her, not even Jacob. I leaned over, opened my file cabinet, and pulled out my trump card, the results from the genetic test that I hadn't even told Hope I'd had done. They confirmed it. Jacob wasn't mine. Not in blood, anyway. I dropped the documentation in Lucas's lap. Read it and weep. Not my kid, not your soul. His lips tightened as he perused the paperwork, and he tossed it onto my desk as though it were of no import. Here's the thing, though, Jim. He sat up straight and fixed me with a stare. My hands broke out in sweat, and the back of my neck prickled. Don't you think we've seen every trick in the book? We wrote the book for Pete's sake. He suddenly held a hand up and looked at the ceiling. Yeah, yeah, sorry, Peter, touchy-touchy. Anyway, point is you're not getting off on a technicality. That's precisely what I'm doing. The contract is for the soul of my firstborn child. I don't have a child. Oh, but you do. The shark grin was back. Families aren't just born, they're made. You were in the room when Jacob was born. You found out early on, judging from the date on that lab work, that he wasn't your bio kid, and yet you raised him and loved him and nurtured him like your own. But the contract specifically says firstborn. Read it again. Firstborn, with an E. You even noticed that when you signed it. Now, if you'd left Hope when you found out and never had contact again, you might have a case. As it is, you haven't treated Jacob any different than you would have if he'd been your biological child. You've borne his sorrows, his joys, his failures, and his accomplishments just like any real dad. You've done a great job, really. You should be proud. Oh my god. I sank into my chair. By raising Jacob, by doing the right thing, I doomed him. I'd thought the funny spelling was just funny spelling. Lucas had gotten me on a technicality. A bit late to be calling on him, all things considered. My head snapped up. Take mine instead. Come on, Lucas. He barked out a laugh that held no humor whatsoever. Who do you think has it now? Jim, you signed a contract with Satan in your own blood, man. Your soul is already forfeit. 
Yeah, but I'm healthy. I'll live for a good long while. Take it now and leave Jacob alone. I'll go quietly, without a scene. He tilted his head, considering. The phone rang, and I stared at it like it was a particularly venomous snake. It was Jacob's number on the caller ID. Probably should answer that, Lucas said mildly. It might be important. I picked it up and hit the button. Hi, Jacob. What's up? Hey, Dad. I ran into Valerie. You ran into Valerie? My voice was practically a squeak. What? Oh, not literally. He laughed. Good one, Dad. I met Valerie, and she wants to go for a ride in the new car. Is it okay? I breathed for a few moments. Yeah, sure, Jacob. Just be careful, okay? Sure. I love you, son. Love you too, Dad. The easy way he said it raised a lump the size of a watermelon in my throat as I hung up. I can't do this, I said with my face in my arms. I can't let you have him. He's got his whole life ahead of him. It's not a matter of letting me, if that makes you feel any better. You don't have a choice. He paused. Or rather, you made the choice 24 years ago, and now you have to live with it. My hand closed on a silver letter opener in the shape of a cross I kept around. I'm not sure I can. Screw this. I didn't know if it was even possible to harm Lucas, but damned if I wouldn't try. I leaped across the desk, aiming the letter opener at Lucas's chest. Brilliant light flashed from his body and slammed into me with physical force. Blinded, I crashed backwards to the floor. I held a hand in front of my face, squinting through tears, trying to see. That couldn't possibly be. Lucas was on his feet. Taller, somehow. A pair of shining white wings sprouted from his shoulders, brushing the nine-foot ceiling with their feathered tips. His t-shirt hung off his torso in tatters, shredded from the strain of trying to contain him. You dare. His voice sounded like a lion's. I didn't care. I was toast anyway. You're trying to take my kid's soul. Yeah, I dare. Give me another shot and I'll dare again. The light faded, and I could see him now. I gestured at the wings. I hadn't really believed until this moment, but I was too tired and too stressed to be surprised. Probably ought to put those away before Hope comes up wondering what all the noise is about. His mouth quirked, but the wings didn't disappear. You are pretty amazing. Have a seat, Jim. I staggered up, righted the chair he'd vacated, and collapsed into it, still holding the letter opener in front of me, like it would help if he decided to gut me like a deer. Not what I expected. Shouldn't they be black and bat-like? Where are your horns? Well, I'm not exactly who I said I was. I'm actually working for the other team. My head felt like it wanted to explode. You're... what? He perched a hip on the corner of my desk. It creaked alarmingly. I'm your guardian angel, Jim, and this was a test. All I could do was stare and repeat the last two words. A test? You passed, by the way. Flying colors. Couldn't have asked for better. The letter opener was awesome. I... you... what? He delved into my mini-fridge and came out with a bottle of water. I wished for something stronger, no matter the early hour, but didn't have anything handy. Well, you didn't pass every test. The one where you actually signed the contract, that was a huge failure. But you made up for it in spades afterwards. Getting involved in church, that was a nice touch. We all liked that a lot. I drained half the water in one long swallow and remembered to breathe. You're an asshole. I've been hanging around on Earth for a really long time. One side of his mouth turned up. Some of humanity was bound to rub off. And you suck as a guardian angel, seriously. I glared at him. How did you not stop me from signing that contract? Free will, Jim. I made the offer. It was up to you whether to take it or not. For what it's worth, it's impossible for anyone to sell any soul that way, let alone one that's not theirs. I drained the rest of the water. Bottom line, I'm off the hook, and so is Jacob? He nodded. His wings went back where they belonged, wherever that was. You're off the hook. Jacob's safe. Then get out. I don't want to see you again for a while. He closed the door quietly behind him, and I sat there and shook for a long, long time.
When we dropped Jacob off at the university, I handed him an unabridged dictionary. He hefted it. It was huge and probably weighed ten pounds and lifted an eyebrow. Thanks, Dad, but it's a little old-fashioned, don't you think? There's a disc for your computer inside, too. I clapped him on the shoulder. Just remember, son, spelling is important. Really important. Also, I want to meet your roommates. We hope you enjoyed Full Ride by Julie Frost, read by Larissa Thompson. If you'd like to make a donation to the author and narrator of this story, check out the story page link in the description and click the PayPal donate button or pledge your support to us directly on Patreon. Would you like to submit a story to the Centropic Oracle? A link to our submission guidelines can be found in the description.